Today we are performing a thoracic thesis on a 66-year-old woman with advanced liver cancer and congestive heart failure. She is facing a new challenge, a large symptomatic pleural effusion. She is presenting with significant dyspnea, and her imaging shows a large left-sided pleural effusion. She is short of breath even at rest. Her oxygen saturation is 90% on room air. Our job today is to help her breathe easier by performing a therapeutic thoracentesis. This isn't just a procedure, it's a direct intervention to improve her quality of life. Let's walk through how we do this safely and effectively. Before we begin, remember, thoracentesis is not just a procedure, it's the moment of precision, every step matters. First, position the patient upright, leaning slightly forward, allowing the diaphragm to descend and the pleural fluid to collect dependably. This position opens our acoustic window for ultrasound guidance when it's needed. We select the intercostal space on the mid-clavicular line just above the rib to avoid a neurovascular bundle. This skin is clean thoroughly, a sterile field set, local anesthesia infiltrated through the skin, subcutaneous tissue, and down to the pleura. Always talk to your patient, reassure her with every step. After a sterile prep and drape and generous local anesthesia, please make sure the patient is comfortable. With the introducer needle in hand, advance slowly, controlled, and steady. We now thread the catheter gently into the pleural space, and we drop the needle. The fluid begins to drain, typically stroke colored in liver disease, sometimes more serious in heart failure. We attach the syringe, now the first aspiration. What are we looking for? Is the fluid bloody? If so, does it clot? If it clots, it's likely a traumatic tap, and we may need to reassess. In this case, we are expecting a transudate due to her heart failure. But with her cancer, we must also rule out a malignant exudate. We'll send samples for cell count, protein, LDH, cytology, and cultures. Drain gradually to rapid removal can precipitate re-expansion pulmonary edema or sudden hemodynamic changes. Listen to your patient's breathing, monitor her comfort and watch for cough or chest discomfort. Thoracentesis is a diagnostic, therapeutic and compassionate all at once. It's not just removing fluid. It's giving a patient their breath back. As Floyd drains, I want you to think about two critical things. First, how much is too much? We typically stop at 1 to 1.5 liters to minimize the risk of re-expansion pulmonary edema. Second, how is the patient tolerating it? Any chest pain or coughing, continuous monitoring is key. In some patients, it might be less amount, like this patient. We finally could aspirate 500 milliliter. The post-procedure chest x-ray is mandatory. We are looking for two things. One, successfully the fluid level is lower. And two, the absence of complication, specifically no pneumothorax.
After the procedure is done and the fluid is drained enough, we remove the needle and cover the side with a sterile gauze and we want a patient to lie down on her back to put pressure on the side.